you know, expect to be in a horror movie band with all these guys from bands you used to tour with 10 years ago. And you're like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. And that's your life. You know Insane. I mean? Insane. Yeah, that's not, so I, I think I'm pretty blue pill. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, let's welcome the one and only Ricky Armelino. That was the most jubilant and expressive introduction I have ever received on a podcast before. Was it? I've had a lot of rest. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energetic. I mean, I, I feel like you have to, right? You gotta, you gotta bring it. Yeah. 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 Uh, what what yeah. are you drinking? What what's your uh, what's your go to uh, Starbs order? Is that what they call it? Starbies. Oat milk cappuccino. Okay, delicious. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't wake you up if it's not right. Fair. Very fair. Well, thank you so much again. Uh, I wanted to kind of start. Uh, I, I think this should be a Corgi appreciation live stream. So I would okay. love to talk Corgis. Um, what is your favorite thing about your dog and about Corgis in general? God, I can't say I can't say enough about how much I love that thing. Um, so starts is he has a couple different personalities and they're all funny. I like all of them, but they're very different animals. And the one is his, his play personality is probably the most stubborn and, um, what's, what's the right word for it? He, he's just so tenacious. It, mm. He, he, you, I have to decide when he's done playing, he'll hurt himself. He can't oh. stop playing. He can't stop playing. He doesn't know how. He'll just keep going. Um, so I remember years ago, me and Adam took him to a soccer field, and we're just kicking a soccer ball around. And he ended up hurting his back, and we didn't know for a while just because he doesn't know how to stop playing. Uh, big dogs will you know, play tug of war with bigger dogs. The other dog will eventually just get bored and stop because Starks will just be getting drug around, and he will not let go. He won't let go. But then when he's home and he's just in his element in the house, he's, he's timid. Uh, if you're holding an object he's unfamiliar with, he kind of will just look at you and walk out of the room. It isn't particularly uh, shocked or anything like that, but he just doesn't, he doesn't like new things when he's in his own personality. And uh, he's also extremely, extremely easy to deal with. Um, he just needs to go, he needs to play like 20 minutes a day, go on a, go on a walk or two. One of the easiest dogs in the world to, to deal with. Everybody loves him. Oh, I love Corgi so much. It, it's like, yeah. it's you and, you and the queen, right? I mean, like she had all these royal Corgis, so there must be something yeah. very special about, about Corgis. Oh my gosh. They're, they're, I, I do, I think I'll probably continue owning Corgis, uh, throughout my life. Um, if, if I, if I do continue to get more dogs, uh, they're, they're such a good companion animal. Uh, they, you know, they, they're just, they're really easy to train. They're, they're extremely, extremely loyal and just all they want is food. It's all they want. Same. So you just give them a couple, you give, you give them a couple treats and they'll do whatever you, whatever you prefer that they do. Yeah. I, I love that. Yes. I am loyal and I too love treats. So um, yeah. I have a lot in common with, with corgis. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> to, to pivot just a little bit, you're also getting compliments on your holiday cup from Starbucks, which I guess is, this is the, the, the one from this year. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So uh, you That's grew up in, in land. Is it, I don't know how to pronounce it. Lancaster. Is that, am I saying Lancaster. Right? Lan we, Lancaster? We say, uh, we say Lancaster and then in California, there's a Lancaster as well. Um, I, I, I moved to Lancaster when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. Was there like a, a big music scene there? What, what was it like? No. <laughs> No, okay. but we, we did have a music scene. Uh, so I came to, I, I, I started doing the shows and stuff. Uh, my first show I ever went to go see was Our Lady Peace at the Chameleon Club. Um, and I also saw Dashboard Confessional of Brand New when I was really young. Whoa. And then I started going to like the Creation Music Festival. So we had the, we had the Chameleon Club, it's Club of Likes of Pennsylvania. And I started seeing bands there. I started playing guitar in a band called Shut Up Gorgeous couple older guys I, I was uh i was the young guy and um we we opened for thrice early november um uh, we opened for a static lullaby so those were some of the bigger shows i played i was like 15 and um 
we uh, there started being kind of like a, a hardcore scene uh, girl because um, there was a couple dudes and one of them was uh, JB uh, John Brubaker from uh, August Burns Red, uh, awesome dude. He started booking shows in, in uh, at the fire hall that we had called the. Um, uh, wait, it was right by Park City. What? what, what I can't even remember. It was uh, what do you what do you call, you know one of like the all the guys who went to war they go they all go to the fire hall what's it called I the, can't remember uh, oh American my gosh. Legion the, the American Legion. Legion yes yeah yeah so we started doing uh so I remember JB started booking shows there and a couple other spots and he started getting these bands in town uh, sorry I'm so stuffed up tonight but he started getting bands in town uh we, we were talking like Evergreen Terrace and On Broken Wings and the Red Chord. And um, so so August Burns Red would play a lot of those shows. And so would uh, a couple other ba bands from our area. We had one called Boy Wonder that was pretty popular. Uh, we had one called Alba React and Sadaharu. And then I was in a band called Bedford Exit. And then I eventually started This or the Apocalypse. And then I started touring. I was, I was around 19 when that started. Wow. So... Uh, Lancaster, uh, I think August Burns Red was really the big thing that started a, a movement of music, and then all of a sudden everything was metalcore. From that point on, you had um, a whole bunch of bands. You had August Burns Red, This is the Apocalypse, Texas in July, and then you had tons of other ones kind of like uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding all those, and you started having some really big shows. So it, out of nowhere, Lancaster kind of went from being, you know, it, it's it's a... It's a small area, but it's close to a lot of bigger cities. Uh, it's close to New York City, Baltimore. It's close to Washington, D.C. Uh, it's like three hours away from Pittsburgh. Um, you know, you could get to to um, uh, what, whatever the big city is in Delaware if you wanted to go there. I forget which, uh, which one is that. That city in Delaware, that one. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, you can you could go there if you want to. You could go to Jersey. You could go to you could go to the shore. So Lancaster, though it's a really small place, there are a lot of bigger cities around it. So the, the people in Lancaster were it, it wasn't like being in the middle of the Midwest where you had to drive five hours to get to a city. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I was gonna say if you didn't turn out being a musician, you also could have been a wrestler because that seems to be like the common thing for wrestlers. Like you're in this town, and then three hours this way is one city, and then you make town. Is that what wrestling? Say that again. You think, I, you think I could have been a wrestler? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Very cool. Why not? Um, oh, and it's no it. I, I did Russian martial arts growing up. Oh, you did? Okay, that's that's it's pretty called, cool. It's called Sambo. Dang. Okay, so do you recall like the first memory that you had or first moment that you knew that you were a musician? Did something just click for you or did you wake up one day and you're like, this, this is it for me? No. No, yeah. never. I, I I don't know what drew me to music. I think it was just I wanted attention, but um, oh. I was never particularly a very musical person. I do remember being, I do remember that Lion King soundtrack hitting. <gasps> you know what I mean? Like yeah. that one was hit, like Hakuna Matata. There were some jams on it. So, Yo, shout out Alan uh, Menken. Yep, he did the thing. Yeah. And then I, I would, um, I, you know, I'd kind of passively listen to stuff. Uh, I, 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 my sister had a, had a CD collection. And I would um, I play games on my parents' um, Apple 2GS computer. So I was listening to a pretty steady um, cycle of like Nirvana and Rage Against the Machine and Alanis Morissette and Wu-Tang and Busta Rhymes and Green Day. <laughs> and uh, so, so it, it, I had no interest in knowing what the artists looked like. I had no interest in knowing their history. I didn't want to know what the songs were about. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I just I, I would just listen to those CDs. And it was about, I was like 12 years old. I was at my friend Mike's house. Me and him fell out of touch for, for years just because we, we graduated high school and, and went on. And I, I just recently connected with him. He popped up on Instagram. I got a notification because he's still in my contacts. It was like, your contact Mike has a, he has an Instagram now. So I messaged him. I messaged him from the Hawk account, which I never okay. really go on that often. So I, so he gets a random message from this band Hawk. It's like, holy shit, Mike, what's up, dude? I'm sure he looked at it, was like, oh god, him. <laughs> but uh, but you know, I was at his house and he sat me down. He's like, yo, have you ever heard this before? And he played Sublime. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, first time I heard that song, Santa Ria, I was like, ooh, I think I like me. And he told me Bradley from Sublime's whole story, you know what I mean? That, yeah. he, that he died of a drug overdose and he sang about it. And, you know, he had this dog and all this stuff. And, or wait, no, 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 he died, died in a car accident. He, uh, gosh, yeah. Wait, no, 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 I'm thinking of the guy from Snot. Bradley was- died of a drug overdose. Yes. The guy from Snot died of a car accident with his dog that was really Oh, my God, stuff. horrible. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, he tells me the whole story. Uh, and I remember the lyric, one day I'm going to lose the war was in there. And that was the first time that I, I acknowledged that lyrics had a, uh, a, a, a you know, an ability to, to create an emotional effect. And I think I was a little hooked on that. Like I was a little hooked on this whole mythology around this singer. And, um, and then that kind of led to me getting into I sort of slipped into becoming a really big fan. I loved Radiohead. Mm-hmm. I loved um, loved Radiohead. And I got into all like the 90s stuff, Bush, Nirvana, fell in love with Kurt Cobain, fell in love with, um, you know, some of the punk bands, uh, AFI, loved the anti-flag. Um, and then that kind of led way to all the emo stuff. So then I found, uh, I got an at the drive-in CD at the mall and then uh-huh. it was done. I had a fucking sweater on. I had a, collared shirt underneath the sweater every day girls started saying they like the way that I dressed and I was like dude I am just literally looking at what people look like on this new MDD2 channel um I found Thursday um then I start playing guitar and then that's you know I got kind of funneled into that music movement so then it was like story of the year and Finch and you know oh. all the so I just did when we were young best so right I, I, I was a, con- you know, I am the consumer for that. You know, I'm in my, you know, I'm in my, my thirties and, and I, I, at one point absolutely, absolutely wanted to be, you know, a person in that music movement. I wanted to be Adam Lazaro from Taking Back Sunday. And I, I loved all that stuff. So that kind of kept, um, that sort of kept me in the, the whole entire, you know, underground music movement and then college happened and then it was like, I was started getting into heavier music and, and I had to know all the subgenres. So I was listening to a lot of this like uh, political screamo stuff like Orkin and Seisha and all these <laughs> bands that sounded like cars hitting people and just. <laughs> yeah, right. And, like, apparently the lyrics were very anti cop. I couldn't make out a single lyric. Mm-hmm. Like all that stuff just sounded like. <laughs> and then I <laughs> loved it. Um, and then uh, there's this band, Boys Night Out. And they were combining um, like kind of hardcore with pop punk, and I really, really loved them. And um, then I, I was just I started this band, This or the Apocalypse, and we just randomly started playing metalcore stuff, and we got signed to a record label, and then I'm on tour with August Burns Red, and then um, we meet the guy from Lamb of God, and then we got the drummer of Lamb of God producing a CD for us. And at no point during any of this shit could I really actually sing or play guitar so um <laughs> that was interesting that was interesting to navigate so just to, just to answer your question in 10 minutes yeah um, <laughs> I love it. did i think i was a musician i was always kind of looking at it from an angle going i think i could figure out how to do that and then the times where it went well were intoxicating and i, I fucking loved every moment of it and but then there are a lot of times where it was like I was getting verifiable evidence that no, you are not a musician. You have a lot of shit to learn. And mm. that that's kind of been, you know, whenever I meet people who talk about doing what I do or anything and they're, you know, they're usually like in their early twenties or something. They're like, Oh, you know, sometimes I, I just, I never learned how to do that stuff. And it's too late. It's like, dude, I'm still getting lessons. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Just lie your way into it. Put me as a reference. <laughs> there you I'll, go. I'll, I'll, I'll say whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Lie your way in. That's what I did. There you go. And I, I respect yeah. that. And and I also respect that you're like willing to give the long answer because like being in on this side of the industry when you're picking people's brains and you're like, so how did you blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, yes. And you're like, okay, this is going great. Yeah, this is going real great. Um, okay, so you kind of mentioned you're actively on tour right now. You recently played the When We Were Young Fest. It, yeah. was, was there like a favorite moment from, from that journey? Because I, I got to see a lot of like behind the scenes footage. The crowds there were just insane. I think the, 
I think it is one of the best run fests I've played since Warp Tour, which could be explained by the fact that it was the people that ran Warp Tour that ran it. And um, it made me feel like I was on Warp Tour 2018 again. And that was one of the best times of my life. So I, I was I was a pretty happy person there. Just everything went smoothly. I Nothing got in the way between me and seeing any of the bands that I wanted to see, except That's having to play an Ice Nine Kills set, which was right. fucking in the way. But other than that, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I've only seen such positive, and and obviously, you know, what happened weekend one with the the wind delay, and I there was okay. Yeah. So I, I feel so bad. I feel so bad for anybody that that. Of, of that, course, but safety so first, bad. always safety first, always. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I needed that off day mm -hmm. so bad because we were, you know, we, we had so much stuff going on and um, flights keep getting, it, it, lately airports have been so bad with flight delays and everything. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this year, we've literally just been planning our flights out earlier just because we know that they're going to get delayed. And um, so we got into Vegas super late. We didn't get the to the air. We all stayed in this big Airbnb. It was amazing. We got there at like 1.30 in the morning. There's a fucking basketball court in the back of it. There's like bocce ball. There's a pool. There's a hot tub. There's like foosball inside the house. Like clearly somebody just bought and bought a building to make an Airbnb for groups of people because it, it could house like 21 people. And uh, and we got there and we're like, fuck, we have to wake up it in like six hours and, and go straight to the fest. And so we did, we woke up and right when we were about to leave, we got the notification, which was literally just somebody forwarding it to our tour manager because it mm. went public. It, the, when we're Young Fest, Fest is big. The bands normally don't know stuff before. Like we found out about the tour when it got announced. There were NDAs in place. We were not allowed to know about the festival. So when it initially came out, we were sharing it on group chat thinking it was bullshit you know oh, and so it went and then somebody's like um a day to remember just posted this and we're like i beg your fucking pardon like why would they post this bullshit and then they're like um avril lavigne just posted this and you're like they even fooled avril lavigne like what and then that was when our booking agent got a hold of spencer and let him know so when the event got canceled that day, we weren't told. We weren't even told when the event, when we were put on the event. Why would we get told when it got canceled? Right. No, so, of course. You heard it through so, the you know, Yeah. So, so uh, and then I had the nicest off day I've ever had because there are big concrete walls around the Airbnb. So the wind wasn't a problem. I could see the palm trees doing this, but inside of it, I spent four hours working on my basketball shot because I've, and? I've always, it got better. Good. Good. Yeah. So I will say I loved that. I loved that off day. I know a lot of people didn't because they lost a lot of money. And I'm sorry about that. But just getting one day off before the longest two weeks of my life. But we did when we were young, flew right to Mexico, played Mexico off day, flew back. And when we were young, then we started a tour. I've never been that dried out and tired. I, that, well, uh, but before I ask you a little bit more about the tour, uh, you mentioned obviously you're staying in an Airbnb. Have you had the opportunity to see Barbarian yet? I know you're a busy man. No, I, I, I don't watch a lot of stuff, unfortunately. Okay. Most of my free time is on my laptop trying to produce people's music, mm -hmm. and I'm always weeks behind. So, it, it, so a movie... I can never convince myself to spend that long doing something. That, that's totally fair. You are a busy person. And that's what I wanted to ask about next is like you, your, your off days are incredibly rare. So yeah, in yeah, the yeah. event that you're not on your computer working on production, what is your like dream off day? Uh, I'd like to rock climb. Um, when, when I have uh, my off days, I, I, my favorite ones, uh, I usually get a run in. I'll do something like rock climbing. Or I'll go to the gym or something like that. I, I try to go. I usually want to go see something cultural. And, and, you know, in town, like yesterday when we were in um, Tulsa, we had to go see Black Wall Street and uh, the, the Tulsa Cultural Center. Um, you know, today in St. Louis, had to go see the big arch and, you know, just go grab coffee, check it out, come back. Uh, I, you know, we went uh, go-karting the one day. 
I actually okay. really like I like that a lot more. Like the really fast ones. I got I got first place on the first run. I got like fifth awesome. on the second one. But I loved that. Um I like I like I really do like to go do like sightseeing type stuff and like you know, just any exciting fun thing. Like it when we're in Reno, I, I did the rock wall that goes up um there's a hotel that you climb up the side of the hotel and you're hanging like 60 feet above the street in Reno. Oh, I loved that. So, you know, if I could go like skydiving or some shit like that, I would do that. Um, so you're a thrill you seeker know. is what I'm getting from this. Not, not like, not to any ri ridiculous extent. Like I'm not trying to parkour on buildings or anything, well, but I, yeah. you know, I, I ever, I like to go on roller coasters and just try to stay like, psychopath calm on them okay you know I mean? sure just, just try to see if i can like keep my breathing steady and just go through it do, do you have a favorite coaster um no no they're all fine great lovely yeah see I, i'm like a universal studios kid because those are like just enough that i like yeah. get the thrill of it but i'm also not you know perpetually hanging upside down for most of it so yeah. So, so Iceland Kills gets to do a lot more cool free shit. Uh, the other day, we had an off day. We went to go see the number one haunted house in America, which was in, um, where was that? That was in uh, Tucson. It was awesome. They had a they had a zombie shooting range uh, where you like, you go through and there's four of us with a laser. You get a real assault rifle with, a, it's a laser gun. And, uh, and you gotta, you gotta shoot them in the head with the laser. Uh, and, and, and that was when my, um, you know, like my, my tactical stuff started coming out. My fam, my family works in, uh, police equipment. Oh, so we, God. we were going to do that. And I'm, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, I'm like Chevy eyes there. All right, Chris, go look over, you know, I'm like doing this shit. And they're like, what the fuck are you saying? What is wrong with you? Why are you saying this shit? And I was like, oh, sorry. My dad's just been saying shit like this to me since I was like seven. I, I like, it's just like, yeah. You know what I mean, so I, I do, I, I, you know, I saw, I would say one of these days on one of those off days, there, there was that video of Keanu Reeves and he's just running around shooting every fucking thing. And, you know, just like, bam, 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 pulls out a gun. And I want to I wanna learn how to do that someday. Yeah. That's, that would be a perfect off day is go shoot shit with Keanu Reeves. Man, how do we set that up? Keanu, if you're watching, long time watcher. Yeah. yeah. Keanu. Keanu. Oh Big, my God. Oh, love him so Big. much. Big Matrix fan, big oh, Matrix fan, same. and that's why I didn't watch. I didn't watch the new one. Good, then you'll remain yeah. a big Matrix fan. Exactly. I'm like, that's how much I like that. That's how much I like the the original trilogy. So, which pill do you take? Are you going red or blue? I think I already listen. You, you, to, to understand why I took the red pill, <laughs> you'd have. Are we? No, no, no. I see. I don't know. Like, because I'm like. I think I'm like kind of like medium woke, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but, but I've had friends who've talked to me and they're like, you know, you're not that progressive. They're like, really? Because I always thought I was like a frothing, you know, I grew up with a family that works with police officers. So I always thought I was like a unhinged liberal about things. Um, you know, so I think the red pill, blue pill thing kind of has a connotation to it because 4chan picked it up on red killing people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We, we don't, we definitely yeah. don't have to get political, but you know, it's. Oh, of, course, of course not. And we're not going to under any circumstance. <laughs> I don't have the framework for it. But what I, I was going to say is I do think I'm pretty blue pill because uh, there is no way my life is not a simulation. I just played shows with Metallica. I. Donald Trump was a president at one point. That that yeah. guy, the guy from the the one show, like The Apprentice, I'm, yeah, yeah. And it, sure. like, GameStop was used to be this thing that like I'd make my mom go spend money at, and now it's this thing where like all these bros are, you know, what I mean? like mm -hmm. everything from my past just keeps like getting remixed in some like weird nightmarish way, and and I think that's what happens when at one point during your life you take the blue pill. Where it's just like, okay, it's going to start seeming a little simulation-ish because we're going to start running out of like, you know, the writers are going to start running out of ideas. So, yeah, just expect to start seeing celebrities uh, from before like show up as new leaders, 
you know, expect to be in a horror movie band with all these guys from bands you used to tour with 10 years ago. And you're like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. And then that's your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not, so I, I think I'm pretty blue filled. Mm -hmm. Fair. Very fair. I love it. Yeah. It's, I think it's very simulation ish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I like your perspective once again on all of that. Um, okay. So <laughs> out of curiosity, uh, seeing as you are on tour, do you have any like <laughs> pre-show rituals? Is there anything that you do or as a group? Yeah. Um, it keeps, it keeps growing, but every day I got to go for a run and sing all the songs. Uh, like, so I run and I just, I sing them quietly to myself. Um, I usually, uh, I try to get like, Kind of like 15 minutes of weights in or you know just anything to like make my muscles <laughs> I, yeah just i'm really obsessed about I'm obsessive about working on my posture so i think i'm kind of like uh and then i have to do like i do like about an hour of guitar stuff a day um that's all like shit i have to do for each other. and mm -hmm. and so i try to start early with that um, and then from that point on, we all have to do, we do makeup every day. Um, and so that requires us all to be in a room together. So I don't know if, I think that's kind of our, our ritual. Cause we do that. We always have to do a fist bump before the show. It's always Pat, Pat's always initiating the fist bump. Like I always see Pat's hand. I'm like, oh, God, what a good dick. You know, like what a good guy always remembering this. Cause he's like walking around, making sure everybody's got the fist bump um i love him oh I, I love that uh is there anything that you have to bring with you on the road like besides the obvious just something that is comforting to you that you like to have um I'm trying to i have this i have this muscle uh this like massager gun one yes. of those things i have one yeah, too. Think, amazing uh, which one do you get uh, I don't know, but it's a pretty heavy duty one. Like my husband and I, like the first one we got wasn't enough. Now the one we have is like. Yeah, mine's, mine's the uh, the hyper bowl. Maybe he can tell me in the comments. I'm sure he'll know what it is. I, I don't know. But yeah. I think, that, I think that thing and then um, uh, like a, a, a um, like an El Chapo amount of edibles for the bus rides. And cool. I think that's. I think those are the things that I have to bring. Important, very important. Okay, so uh, how about two more questions and then we're gonna go to our game because we do have a game. So I'm taking this one from uh, the comments. They wanna know, uh, and if you know, that'd be cool too, if there's gonna be a Silver Scream 3. I don't know. Okay. And I, I, if I, you have to understand how hard I would get fired if I actually did know and I just decided to leak that information on a like podcast. Right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the firing would be so immediate and mm -hmm. quick. It would be mm -hmm. like, Are you fucking serious, man? Yeah. You know you have to go home and it would be like, Yeah, I know. Yeah. And we don't want that. Yeah. We want you still yeah. in the band. So um yeah, I think I, like me on the gig. It, it's so funny, like questions and comments that we get when people like try to spoil or, or something yeah. and yeah you're like listen the gig's just starting to get fun like can we not fire me but i, I think like the good follow-up would be that obviously silver scream has been such a huge success and the guest list yeah. has been insane so I will say, like there is no big plan yet there, there's um i know spencer has a lot of ideas and he bumps them past us all the time but like spencer's a vision he thinks of all the shit. So like, um, he's definitely, he's an extremely collaborative person. Spencer loves like writing with other people and kicking ideas around. He has like a whole team of different people that he likes to work with. And, um, and he's, he's really good at what he does. But I think um, there, there have been a lot of ideas. You hear a lot of ideas like a year before they're executed and they never look anything like what the ideas are when you're just like, so. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe we do something like this. They're like, oh yeah, cool. Like I've heard like 10 different I you know, 10 different thoughts on it. They're sure. Like, I don't know, maybe maybe we do this and then and then we do that or something. I don't know. I don't know. And you're always just like, yeah, I don't know, you're the you're the dude. So Yeah, and, and I, I I'm not sure whether like outside people like that don't do like conventions and stuff understand how much planning goes into these things. So it's just it, it's 
It's a lot. Well, it's a lot. Silver Scream 2, I will say this. Uh, Silver Scream 2, I don't know, you know, and, and this is a concern that, that uh, has been expressed, be, expressed between multiple uh, people, is nobody knows the, the sheer amount of insane, uh, the, 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 the amount of, like, small detail uh, oriented uh, writing went into that album mm. and how are we going to do that without a pandemic so it's like shit, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. because now we're touring all the time like we spent like eight months out of the year on tour and that's that stuff ain't happening on tour so yeah you know i think at some point we're going to have to start figuring it out while we're on the road but we definitely haven't yet each of the members has like we always write things and give them the Spencer and hopes he uses them. Like, hey, I got this idea for this movie. You should check it out. Yeah. And you're basically giving it to somebody and they'll listen to it and be like, yeah, there's a couple parts in there. I think we might we might use as a demo. And you're like, all right, cool. So all of us have kind of done that where we we sort of like sent Spencer something and be like, you know, if you want to make a song about this, this could work. And, you know, if he uses it, we get a cut of it. If not, whatever, you know. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay kind of in lieu with albums and other music and stuff. And obviously like when we started this tonight, you have a very diverse uh, group of music that you listen to. Like you mentioned Alanis growing up and, and Nirvana, but is there like a song or a particular artist that let's say you're kind of having like an, an off day that you can like put on and it will instantly change your mood around? Yeah, if I can pop on uh <laughs> Any of the any of the old uh, early two thousands Blink one eighty two or any other type of pop punk, you know, uh, I think any of the old AFI stuff, Anti Flag, um, Further Seems Forever, uh, Snowbirds and Townies by Further Seems Forever. Mm. Uh, that would definitely do. Oh, uh, uh, American Football, any of that stuff. Awesome. Uh, that, that that'll all do the trick. Cool. All right. Or or or. Old Buster Rhymes. Yeah, for he sure. So, he was so fun. He was so electric. Still there, is. Th there's a song with like Janet Jackson that always like continuously gets stuck in my head. Oh, oh yeah, no, I remember. I remember that music video. I do too. It was iconic. Amazing. Oh. Have you ever seen him live before? Yes, I have. Yeah, he, he's he is a fucking legend. Yeah, for sure. Heck yeah. Okay. So we have a game, Ricky. This is a game of would you rather. There is no wrong answers. Whatever you choose as the correct answer is the correct answer. So it's as simple as that. Going to give you two options. And here, these aren't necessarily easy, but you're going to do great. Okay. Here's the first one. Would you rather switch set lists with Black Veil Brides or switch set lists with Slipknot? I think switch set lists with Slipknot because I would love to play. I would love to play a few of those songs live. I, yeah. I, I Jim Root stuff is so fun. Yes, 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 yes. And they, oh my gosh, you, you were recent, recently touring with Slipknot, yes? Yes. Yeah. Oh my we, we just had, and and uh, there was this one break in the middle of their set where he just plays this rhythm part over and over. It's like. Dun, 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 and just his hand is so tight and it made me i listened to it once and i was like god damn it and i usually set a timer on my my warm-ups that i do every day to five minutes i changed it to 10 minutes because i was i, I was just like dude nah, i gotta I, I gotta get to that that's what i want <laughs> amazing so good so good and like plus like i i don't know how corey does that with all the masks like i it just blows my mind. You know, like when everything was happening with the pandemic and people were complaining about wearing masks, I was like, look at Corey Taylor. <laughs> he's like literally yeah, doing he's, this. Yeah, he's been fine. Oh, yeah, he's been great. All right, here's the next one. Know, it's, Go it's, ahead. It, it, that mask is like moving around. It's like an extension of his face almost. I, whoever made that. Oh, I love this new mask so much. Yeah. Oh, so good. Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather own a guitar that belonged to Prince or own a guitar that belonged to Eddie Van Halen? Own a guitar that belonged to Prince. Good choice. Good choice. Oh, I, I, I am sorry, man. I am not. I, I am not turning down a guitar by Prince. 
I feel like it'd have to be like the purple with the um, the arrow. Yeah, I don't know what he called that guitar, but you can give me anything that was good enough for that guy. It's good enough for me. Perfect. Fair enough. Okay. Would you rather have Beethoven as a pet or Max from The Mask as a pet? Oh God, that is <sighs> Max from the Ma The Mask was very important to me, and Ma Max was very important to me. I did love Beethoven too, but my my lifestyle is a little too active for him. I I, I think that somebody else would should be there to walk in more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great answer. Max. Max it is. Okay. Here's the next one. Would you rather <laughs> write a song about a sketchy Airbnb or write a song about a demon that forces you to smile? I actually think I'd rather write the song about the demon forcing you to smile. Mm. Because I've, I've, I've literally, I feel like I've experienced that before in some circumstances when I don't want to smile and I'm required to put one on. Uh huh. And it very much, and it very much feels like a demon has forced me to do such. Okay, fair. Okay, yeah. we're learning things here today, folks. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll send more. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Oh, I like this one a lot. Okay. Would you rather hang out with the vampires from the Lost Boys or hang out with the vampires from What We Do in the Shadows? Oh, that is the toughest one so far. Okay. I think. You know. I'm gonna have to put. I'm gonna have to put aside um, what I know. Every single, uh, you know, like girl in their twenties or thirties would say, which is hang out with the Lost Boys. I want to hang out with the what, what we do in the Shadows crew. They're so funny. So good. So 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 good. Um, ha have you seen like the original movie? Yeah. That they're doing? Yeah. I saw. I saw the movie. I've only seen a few episodes of the show. I love the show though. Yeah, it's so phenomenal. But yeah, shout out to Kiefer Sutherland. That I, I the Lost Boys so good, so 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 good. Okay, here's the next one, and you kind of partially answered this one earlier, but let's get your actual answer. So, would you rather perform with the first band you ever saw live, or perform with the first band whose album you bought? I think probably perform with the first band whose album I bought. And. What album was that? Uh, I would say the the first one I remember buying is uh, at the drive-in relationship of command. Okay. Okay. Good I answer. Know I, bought, I know I bought other ones before that, but I can't remember any of them. Shit. I think, <laughs> I think the first album that I bought may have been Juvenile from the Cash Money Millionaires. Oh, stand wow. Stand by it. Oh my God. But what's funny yeah. is like, um, so the first album I remember, Judy, like, yeah. yeah, right. Hit him up. Yeah. Um, watching. The, the first, was one of my favorites. Yeah. I was the, the first album I remember ever buying was candy ass from orgy. And now I have the singer from orgy coming on here in a couple weeks. So I'm like, I, I, that album. Congratulations. Was, thanks. Thank you. It just, I, I don't know what it is about that album. I guess because it was my first album that I ever bought. It's just big meaning to me. What a great album. Okay. Uh, I, 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 do they still perform? I'm not sure. I don't I look this up afterwards. I gotta I gotta know because I, I, I used to I used to rollerblade while listening to that record. It's a great record. Like it's it's so good start to finish. And it was like the first time I ever heard music like that, because it was alternative but like gothic but oh i just i love that album um okay here's uh we got two more oh no wait one more oh no this is the last one and Let's this is another tough one i apologize in advance for this one um would you rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse merman centaur hmm. okay any reasons or you just um no okay you don't have to give me one i mean based off this picture i feel like that is the right answer i don't want to be a fish because fish are assholes are they okay that sounds personal but yes okay i like horses i do too i do too well you got them all right ricky 
Thank you so much. This has Thank been you. so much fun. I know, you know, your downtime is really precious to you. And so I feel really honored that you're willing to spend a little bit of your day with me and Thank everyone so watching. Um, but before we do wrap it up, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here on this fine, fine Thursday? No, I guess uh, I want to thank everybody coming out to these uh, Trinity and Terror shows. They've been huge. And, um, you know, I, I've been I've been trying to stay on top of making all my online content for people and everything while doing the tour as well, doing the music production stuff and everything. So, you know, it's 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 very hard to stay on top of everything. But my fans have been so cool and so funny. So I, I, I definitely want to just thank uh all of these people who have been paying attention to the stuff that I do and I appreciate it. Heck yeah. Well, you're actually going to be in my neck of the woods in a couple weeks. So we'll have to come check you out. Cause right, uh, well, uh, you'll be DM me on the side and uh, make sure that I can get you into the show. I will. Yeah. It's in uh Boca Raton. You're coming to Boca Raton. So that'll be a fun one. All right. I love Boca Raton. Yes, me too. Me too. Um, Anyway, before I do let you go, Relisha, back into St. Louis. I'm going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up uh, next Tuesday from Whose Line Is It Anyway? We have Gary Anthony Williams. We also have dentist and comedian Jimmy Lee, uh, WWE, well, former WWE superstar Al Snow. We also have Casey Jost from Impractical Jokers, Jay Gordon from Orgy, and Duncan Sheik, a uh, musician. He's written so many incredible Broadway musicals like Spring Awakening and American Psycho. But Ricky, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank you for being like so open and honest and telling us all of your stories and corgis are the best. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, until we meet again, we'll see you guys real soon. Be safe, everybody. Take care.